hello, I'm part of this Lieutenant Kirk and Mr. Wade. We are going to take you around this fire department in Spartanburg. It's the office for the officers of the station. Each station has an officer. Um, we have a lieutenant on two, sta um, two shifts, and then we also have a captain. But in here, we have all the paperwork. We do run reports, and we keep some of our extra batteries for um, the walkie-talkies and things. Okay, now we're st standing in our day room, which is in, usually in your house, it would call the living room. This is where we come in and sit down and, you know, conversate and look at TV when we don't have anything else to do. All right, this is our kitchen area. Um, this is where we sit down and eat when we have food to bring in. We eat here or sometimes we, when we have enough time, we cook. Um, not often, but when we do have an opportunity, we do cook and we sit down and have a home-cooked meal. Okay, this is called a bunk room. It's more like your bedroom. Um, we do have beds, so at night when we get tired, we can come in here and go to sleep until we have a call. I see y'all have a PlayStation there. Do y'all ever like get to play a lot? Or... Um, yes, when we have a downtime, the firefighters, they'll come back here. They'll play on the PlayStation. They also do it when they play against other firefighters at different stations. Okay, basically, I, so this is a fire engine. Basically, this is it, a traveling toolbox. So in all different compartments, we have different tools that are, have a special purpose that we use for um, the jobs that we go on. Um, we got like nozzles, extra nozzles. Um, up here, we got things like a big tarp. So if you come to your house and it's on fire, um, Upstairs, we may want to cover your furniture and your personal belongings downstairs so they won't get wet. Of course, we got coolers. We got to stay hydrated when we're on fire because it gets really hot. We got extra hoses in this compartment right here. Okay, now this is the uh, compartment. This is what we got cribbing. If you look, it's basically like a big set of Legos that we get to play with as adults. You may have some. But this is what we use if we need to stabilize a vehicle or put something on or something to keep it from falling. So, like I said, these are a big pair of Legos right here. Okay, what I'm holding here, some people call these are the jaws of life, but these are the cutters, and these are like a big pair of scissors. So if we need to cut on a car or some metal to free someone, we just come pick this up. Close it down until it bites on something and cuts it. And then we can open it back up. So like I said, these are a big pair of scissors for us. Okay, here we have two different types of fans. When we come into our house, it's filled with smoke. So in order to release some of the smoke that's in there, we turn these fans on to help blow the smoke out so we can see a whole lot better. Okay, what are you looking at now? This is called a pump panel. And this is the responsibility of the driver. So all the hoses that you see on the truck, the driver has to know which lever to pull in order to get the water to the firefighters in order to fight fire. So he can need to know his calculation. So it's a lot of math involved. So, you know, we constantly in school, he constantly doing training to help keep him proficient in his pumping. Again, this is the back side. You saw the other side from previously, but usually we have two firefighters that ride back here. So one sits on that side of the truck and the other one sits on this side. So depending on what side of the truck is, that's what side the firefighter that get to do the jobs, that get to work more than that. Um, how long does it take y'all to get ready? Um, we have bitch marks we have to hit, so our chief likes for us to be dressed, and out of the station in a minute and a half. So 90 seconds, we're supposed to be fully clothed with all our turnout gear on and out of the station going into a call. And the other benchmark is we're supposed to reach any property within the city limit within five minutes of getting the dispatch, getting the call, giving to us. We're supposed to be there in five minutes. And this here is where the officer sits. He sits here, he talks to the 911 operator. Um, we have an iPad that we can, the, um, Operator will see pertinent information if we need to know something before we arrive on the scene. So we always talk to the operator 
and looking on our iPad to find out more information about the call that we got. Um, how often do y'all have to train? How often do we train? We train pretty much every shift. Um, Monday through Friday, we have three shifts, so someone is training every day. We also go out of town for some classes that offer at, at other locations that we don't offer here, but we can go to other departments, other places around the state and the country to receive other training. And what's the age requirement? Here at the city, um, they have changed it. When I started, it used to have to be 21, but now um, 18. So right out of high school, you can become a firefighter here. Um, if you don't have the training, we put you through training, and it's a good way to start a career right out of high school. Hello Scouts! Today, where did you go? On a tour of the fire 